Greetings to everyone. Myself, Ruby Maria. I have completed my master's in food science and nutrition. Currently, I'm working as a dietitian in Chandra Rheumatology, Immunology and Research Center. Today, it is an International Women's Day. So I am here to give you a talk about like what are the general diet guidelines a woman should follow to lead a healthy life. So first, let's see why you should need a dietary guidance specific for women. Recently, NFHS, that is the National Family Health Survey, has conducted a study in that they have said that nearly 33% of the women in India are malnourished. It also said that every third woman in India are undernourished. It is like if you ask every woman to stand in a line, like every third woman is undernourished. Similarly, every second woman is anemic. Among the pregnant women in India, nearly 85% of the pregnant women are having severe anemic condition. It means like if there is a group of 100 pregnant women, in that 85 pregnant women have anemic. So just think about the condition of the baby. Like usually the baby gets the nutrients needed for its growth from the mother. So uh, to transfer the nutrients, you need the blood. So when you are anemic, there is a low level of blood in your body. So the baby will be deprived of the nutrients needed for its growth. And it also said that in adolescent girls, 33.5% of the girls are having menstrual problems like PMS, PCOD, PCOS, etc. And even endometriosis and so many menstrual problems. So it is like when, you, when there is a uh, malnourished adolescent, that is malnourished teenager, it leads to malnourished women. So they have the increased pregnancy risk. This leads to low birth weight weight. So low birth weight is like a condition where the baby is uh, born very early. It has a body weight of around only, like it is very less than uh, 2.5 kg, like 2,500 grams is the less than 2,500 grams. So if the baby is very low in weight, it leads to stunted child. The uh, growth of the baby gets retarded. So the cycle just, when there is a stunted child, this leads to malnourished adolescent. This again leads to malnourished women. Uh, the pregnancy increases. Again, the cycle runs go on. So if there is a malnourished woman, uh, they also have the early menopause or early hysterectomy. It means like the uterus of the woman is removed where uh, usually the uterus or like the menstruation, what happens in the woman helps the woman in a larger way. Like it helps to helps in absorption of many nutrients. When it occurs earlier, there is a nutritional deficiency like calcium and iron deficiency. It leads to many health problems. So now let's see what happens when you don't take adequate nutrition. The first one is anemic. So already I have said like anemic is a condition where there is a very low blood level in your body. So it leads to many health complications like you, are, you may experience shortness of breath. Since uh, the blood is something which transfer the nutrients to all over the when there is low level of blood, you don't get adequate oxygen. So the oxygen supply is hindered. This leads to shortness of breath, tachycardia and many more. Next is like PMS. PMS is a premenstrual syndrome. It is a condition like before the uh, woman gets periods or uh, bleeds, she gets the symptoms like mood swings. And uh, next is like they get pain in the abdomen, muscle cramps and more on. Next, let's discuss about the eating disorders which women usually experience. The first one is anorexia nervosa. It is the condition where the woman will be in a normal weight and fit, uh, but they uh, see themselves in the mirror as they are like too fat or they have excess, excess fat accumulation. So they end up eating less or they will be uh, doing more fasting. So their uh, nutrient uh, requirement is hindered and they end up being malnourished. Next is like bulimia nervosa. Bulimia nervosa is like the people, uh, the woman are, is like too much of weight, but they can't control. They are not following any diet and they can't control their cravings. They end up eating more. After eating, they may feel guilty that because of excess eating, their weight is going to increase. So they self vomit. Like they will use any laxatives or they induce vomiting. Then as like binge eating, binge eating like usually food is related to emotion. When you are too much happy or when you are too much sad or when you are too much stressed, you end up eating more. 
so this also leads to when you are eating more of unhealthy foods you may end up having many malnourishment next is like mal under nutrition and obesity these are the two important things that india is experiencing currently that there is like equal rise in undernourishment and obesity also this is like the in uh, some uh, houses like where their economic status are very low the women are not given adequate nourishment another thing is like gender inequality the men are given more food when compared to women usually it is like uh first uh, the food whatever prepared is given to the men then the leftover will be eaten by the ladies then obesity obesity is like since we are developing and women are like uh, furnishing in many fields they have uh, like adequate uh, amount so they end up eating more outside and they don't uh, know which kind of food to eat they end up eating more unhealthy food this also leads to obesity and there is no physical activity nowadays so this leads to obesity so now let's discuss about the important nutrients which plays in a woman's health first one is iron iron is an important nutrient in blood so in blood uh, it helps to transfer the oxygen to all organs in our body so when you don't get adequate iron you end up having many problems let's and iron what you are consuming from the food are of two types one is heme and non heme iron heme iron is the good quality iron uh, the bioavailability is more it means like it, you, you will be getting from it from the fleshes that is like non vegetarian sources and uh, non heme iron it is like from the vegetarian sources though it doesn't have more bioavailability it also have a adequate amount of iron content that needed for your body so uh, while you are having a non heme iron sources like plant source for iron requirement try to include vitamin c rich source food also with it because vitamin c like oranges or lemon juices helps in iron absorption so while, while you are having any uh, green leaf or legumes try to include uh, like a glass of uh, lemon juice or an orange juice so it helps to increased iron absorption so let's now discuss about the rda for iron so for an adult adolescent girl you need at least 27 mg per day for pregnant woman you need at least 35 mg per day for lactating woman you need at least 21 mg per day so if you are not taking this adequate uh, iron requirement for your body you, know, you may end up having iron deficiency first one is anemic as i told you earlier second one is like tachycardia tachycardia is like since your blood levels are very low the heart will be pumping more blood like it beats more fast because it need to supply more oxygen to the body because there is no uh, like no adequate level of blood this leads to more pumping of blood like repeatedly this leads to tachycardia since there is no oxygen supply to all the cells or tissues it leads to fatigue or tiredness there also will be an cognitive like impaired cognitive function you may end up having pale skin and shortness of breath so let's discuss what are the plant sources and animal sources of iron first plant sources you will be getting adequate iron from green leafy vegetables you can include more legumes in the diet and you can take adequate amount of dry fruits next in animal sources you can go for red meat fish poultry and liver liver is an excellent source of iron in your diet so next is calcium calcium is an important nutrient for your bone health and teeth like calcium if we are like very much depleted of the calcium you may also so end up having more calcium in the blood this is how means like when there is no adequate calcium in your blood the body starts to grab the calcium from the bones because bones and teeth are like filled with calcium so the body tries to get the calcium from the bones this leads to many deficiencies like osteoporosis osteoarthritis and all so what is the rda for calcium first one is like in for an adolescent girl you need at least 1000 mg per day for a pregnant woman you need at least 1000 mg per day and for lactating since you have to feed the baby you have to provide calcium for the baby also the requirement has been increased from 1000 to 1200 mg per day so if you are not taking adequate amount of calcium you may end up having deficiency the first is osteoporosis osteoporosis then osteoarthritis osteopenia these are like 
Osteoporosis is a condition where the calcium level in your body gets depleted. Similarly, in osteoarthritis, you end up having arthritis in the bones. Then osteopenia is like low bone mineral density. Then you also will experience muscle cramps, aches and spans. Since calcium is related to teeth also, you may end up having dental problems, PMS like premenstrual syndrome and brittle nails and hair. So where do you get the calcium from your diet? The first one is like green leafy vegetables, dried dairy products and dried figs and even fresh figs also you can take it and almonds, sea seam seeds, chia seeds, apricots and fortified orange juices. Since uh, calcium can't be like uh, mm, well tolerated in other foods, it can be well tolerated in orange juices. So you can, uh, nowadays we are getting more of fortified juices. So you can go for that also. Next is vitamin D. Vitamin D is also called as a sunlight hormone. It is a major nutrient for absorption of other minerals. So if there is, uh, uh, if you are not getting adequate amount of vitamin D, you may end up having deficiency of other vitamins like calcium. So uh, uh, vitamin D is in the form of like uh, two forms. One is uh, cholecalciferol that is from the animal sources that is called as a vitamin D3. And in plant source, you will be getting the ergocalciferol that is the pre-vitamin or D2. So though we are getting from these two sources, they are in an inactive form. We have to activate only when you are getting adequate amount of sunlight. So next is like what, uh, how much RDA, like how much of uh, vitamin D you have to take. It is like at least you have to take around 600 IU per day. So if you are not uh, meeting the required amount of vitamin D in a day, you end up having deficiency like rickets, osteomalacia, also known as a bone pain, then muscle weakness and fracture. Since vitamin D is uh, related to calcium absorption, you may end up having too much of fracture when you are depletion of vitamin D. So what are the sources? The first thing uh, vitamin D means, which should come to your mind is the sunlight. Second, you can go for oily fish, egg yolk, red meat, liver and fortified foods. Nowadays, like milk and oil are fortified with vitamin D. So you can go for those sources also. Next, omega-3. Omega-3 is an essential uh, fatty acid usually body makes uh, the required fatty acids with the raw materials or other fats but omega-3 is, is an essential fatty acid you have to uh, provide this to your body through your diet so this omega-3 how much you have to consume in a day is like around 1.1 gram per day why it is that much important is like it is uh, helps in proper functioning of the cells since it has uh, helped for the uh, uh, proper functioning of the cell membrane. So it helps in like uh, attaching other nutrients to the cells. So how it helps is like it controls the heart disease, stroke, lupus. It also helps in rheumatoid arthritis and cancer. So what are the sources of omega-3? So plant sources and animal sources. In omega-3 itself has three types of omega-3. One is like EPA, DHA and APA. So EPA is eicosapentaenoic uh, acid and uh, DHA is docosahexanoic acid and APA is alpha linolenic acid. So this uh, EPA and DHA, they are called as the marine omega-3. This you can get from the fishes. Other uh, like uh, the another form of omega-3 that is called as APA, alpha linolenic acid that you will be getting from plant sources like walnuts and green leaves. You can also get from flax seeds and grass fed animals. So apart from uh, getting these nutrients, you also should follow a balanced diet. So first thing is like you have to take adequate amount of carbohydrates that is in the form of a grains, legumes, pulses and all. Instead of going for refined flows, you can go for a whole grains like millets, millets, brown rice, these and all is a good option. For in millets, you can go for rahi, jowa, bajra, this along with the adequate amount of carbohydrates that two complex carbohydrates you will be getting along with that you also will end up having little bit of dietary fiber also then take like surplus amount of vegetables and fruits in your diet then include for protein sources include meat fish egg if you are a vegetarian go for dairy products and for oil and uh, oil don't take too much of oil in your diet limit the oil intake 
and salt and sugar also should be limited uh, these like salt sugar and oil this should not be taken more it should be very uh, limited then you should hydrate more try to drink at least 2 to 3 liters of water in a day so now let's discuss a uh, trending topic called as a seed cycling usually a uh, woman's body is made up of hormones like in each day a uh, different hormone will be coming up so uh, in during like uh, the woman's menstrual cycle we can divide into two phases one is like follicular phase another one is like a luteal phase so follicular phase is like from menstruation that is the first day of the period till uh, ovulation that is the 14th day of your period during that time the estrogen hormone will be more and the progesterone will be less so if there is a relation between these two you may end up having menstrual problems so if you are taking pumpkin seeds like two teaspoons of tablespoons of pumpkin seeds and flax seeds uh, it helps in boosting the estrogen and it also uh, like uh, uh, avoids the excess estrogen and it also boosts the increased amount of progesterone in luteal phase then is like uh, luteal phase luteal phase is like from ovulation like from 15th day to till your uh, periods day so that time uh, the progesterone hormone should be more and the estrogen hormone should be less to help this you can take like two tablespoons of sunflower seeds and sesame seeds these two seeds will uh, suppress the estrogen level and it also de detoxifies the estrogen level in the liver and also increases the amount of progesterone so by following this cycle it helps to mimic the hormones like it boosts the uh, hormones and you may end up having uh, a proper periods without any irregular so if you are experiencing uh, irregular periods and you don't know any ovulation you can go for a moon cycle like on full moon day you can follow uh, like two types of seeds like if you have to go for pumpkin seeds and flax seeds and the next uh, for 14 days you have to go for sunflower seeds and seeds then apart from these nutrients you have also should follow a healthy lifestyle first is like you have to take a balanced diet as i discussed earlier then try to do more physical activity try to move more uh, not only like household work try to spend some time for your physical activity also you can go for yoga meditation this more than uh, uh, helping your body uh, uh, for your physical fitness it also relaxes your mind then maintain your weight uh, Uh, a sudden fluctuation of weight is also not a good sign like suddenly decreasing your weight suddenly increasing your weight and uh, there is more fluctuation of weight is not a good sign for a healthy individual the next thing is like open up and speak your worries women usually uh, like will think more and they don't share their problems with others try to uh, speak up your worries to your loved ones then the final one which is very important first love yourself love your body love your insecurities because you, uh, when you start loving yourself you will try to take care of yourself thank you uh, thank you everyone for uh, listening to me patiently happy women's day thank you